Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. No Resentment is the title of this devotion. And I find this very important, especially for all of us who have gone through trials and hardships and difficulties, or maybe have really, and I know that is something God works in each and every one of us, where we have to take up our cross and deny ourselves and follow Him. In other words, go through times where we have to lay things down at His feet and come to a place of surrender in ourselves and a place of rest in ourselves. And often that involves some suffering or self-denial. Suffering as the cross, self-denial. In other words, where you cannot insist on your own ways or your own desires or your own thoughts or feelings. And, and, and in times like this, when we go through either sufferings of life circumstances, of the suffering of the loss of self, then we often can be um, confronted with resentment and, and find it difficult to overcome. Resentment is like bitter indignation at having been treated unfairly or an indignant displeasure ill will at something regarded as wrong or injury or unfair or painful or difficult to bear. And in other words, uh, resentment can really cause you to become bitter if you don't watch it. And I personally have had times in my life where I've really had to stand against that and go, no, I will not be begrudging in my heart. I will not be resentful in my heart about some of the things I've gone through in my life. I will not become bitter. I will not become twisted. I will not become dark or crooked inside. And so I want to take you to the scripture here because I want to talk to you about the answer of how to live in victory over resentment and not suffer it and, and have authority over it. So I want to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you've become familiar. You've been introduced to it. You've now experienced His grace for yourself. That though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor. That you, through His poverty, might become rich. In other words, Jesus was willing to give up his glory being equal with God, as it says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. He was willing to give up his glory of being equal with God and become like us a man so that he might redeem us and take his submission to do the will of the Father, which was for him to redeem us to the extreme of death on the cross. And we can see that in all that Jesus suffered of giving up His glory and becoming poor in suffering our shame and our pain and our sin, He had no resentment. So how am I going to live free from resentment, Pastor, when I feel upset, I feel angry, I feel offended that I've had to go through this, that I've had to pay this price. I feel angry, resentful. I, I, I really feel bitter about it, that the price I've had to pay, so how can I not have this? Jesus, Jesus, that's the answer. And I will show you part of the character He gives you in living free from resentment, okay? It says in chapter 53 of Isaiah that He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Sorrow is the word pain. And, and He was a man of pain, not a man of anger. And I'll read you here. Um, it was, let me go ahead and start here, verse 4 of Isaiah 53, and this is the New English translation. He endured the suffering that should have been ours. In other words, we should have been punished for our sins, but He bore the punishment for us. David says, I've had to pay what I didn't know. I've been accused for what I haven't done. And that makes people resentful when people have to endure other people's behaviors <laughs> and it's unfair and, and sometimes even get blamed. Them feeling bad, blaming you for the way they feel when the way they feel is, is their own fault. But you have to bear the pain of others, you have to bear the reproach of others. 
He endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that we should have borne. All the while we thought that his suffering was punishment sent to him by God. But because of our sin, he was wounded, beaten because of the evil we did. Healed by the punishment he suffered, made whole by the blows he received. All of us have been like sheep going astray, each of us turning our own separate ways. But on him he laid the sin of us all. It says, uh, uh, he was a man in verse 3, of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Oh friends, I pray the Holy Spirit shows you this. You see, one of the ways that you can see the Heavenly Father is working in you to help you not to become resentful is that you begin to feel pain instead of anger. And in that pain, you bow your heart before the Lord. You surrender your nature, your character to Him. You surrender what you're unable to bear, what you're unable to, to, to put up with. And you surrender it to Him. You feel weak, you feel powerless, you feel unable to cope with it. And you surrender it to Him, but you feel pain. And I tell you, there comes a grace, oh, that comes and a glory instead of instead of resentment. And that grace and glory is the nature of our Savior by which He overcame all the resentment of all He had to suffer. Oh, praise the Lord that Jesus was willing and that willingness empowers you to not become resentful and to become upset and to become angry. You know, I think about what Jesus had to bear for Peter, right? because I don't know about you, but maybe you're having to bear something for somebody else and it's making you resentful. You kind of don't want to put up with it. You don't want to put up with it. And folks, we can all get tempted to say, I'm, 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 I'm not going to put up with it. And you just pull away and separate yourself. But the price of that is quite painful. It's quite hard. And, and really, before I mention to you, Peter, let me just say one more thing about Jesus that gives him power to empower you to overcome resentment, okay? It's in the sermon that Stephen preached in the book of Acts. And then we'll go to Peter in verse 30. Uh, oh, excuse me, no, sorry, I, I mistake. This is Philip, the evangelist, being led by the Spirit into the wilderness to meet the o Ethiopian eunuch. And, and the Lord, told him to go there in the wilderness while he was having a mighty revival service there uh, together with Peter and John who had come down from Jerusalem to where he was. And so he's in the wilderness and he's like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do here? And then it says, and Philip ran and he heard the Ethiopian reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? Many times, friends, we read it in the Scripture, but don't know how to apply it to our lives. And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come and sit with him. And the place in the Scripture which he, which he read was, listen to this, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. So he was reading Isaiah 53. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch asked, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or someone else? And he began, and Philip told him about Jesus. But what I want you to see is this. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away something, and maybe I'm the only one that has had this, but when I have had to endure injustice, then often I've had to really wrestle against resentment. And, and why? Well, because it, it, it tries to make me angry, offended. And, and I know when, my, uh, when I get offended, the word Offense is the word scandal, which means snare, trap, noose. It is how the devil will trap you to try to make you offended. And it's hard sometimes not to get offended, folks. We can get offended. But what do you do when you get offended? 
the Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesian church in chapter 4, verse 26, he says, Be angry, but do not let the sun go down on your wrath, lest you give a foothold to Satan. You could sometimes get angry about something because it's unjust, it's unfair, it's unright, but don't allow your heart to get darkened. You see, and the Holy Spirit enables you, empowers you to be changed in your nature so that you don't get so offended and so angry and allow that offense to bring darkness into your heart and mind. You see, in his humiliation, his justice was taken away or in his suffering, justice was denied him. And this is where we surrender ourselves fully to God. And I'm going to come to Peter in closing, but I want to take you to Romans 12 before I do. In Romans 12, he says, uh, Repay no one evil for evil, verse 17. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men, beloved. Do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him to drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. The anointing and power that the Lord Jesus gives you gives you authority not to become prey to resentment, to offense, and allow the enemy to start tearing your life apart. And so I want to close with you concerning our Savior, Jesus, and see the sweet nature by which he bore those around him. Because many times people suffer resentment because of what they have to put up with with others. And you can allow yourself to say, well, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. And I understand that feeling. But instead of doing that, I want to say, let the Holy Spirit renew your strength. Let him renew you with the love of the Father. The Heavenly Father standing ready with armloads of his love to empower you and enable you not to give up on people. And here, Jesus in Luke chapter 22, okay? Luke chapter 22. The Lord Jesus says to uh, Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. What does that mean, to sift you as wheat? Satan keeps pushing and pushing to prove that you are worthless. You're like chaff. Sifting like wheat means that you separate the grain from the chaff. The chaff is the outward shell, and inside is the grain, the seed. And the outward shell is like the flesh nature that is actually in itself corrupt. But inside is the treasure of the new life in Christ. And he says Satan is, is pushing and pushing to constantly prove that you're worthless. But I believe, I believe that the seed in you is the true faith of God that he gave you, that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God from Matthew 16, 18. And so, Peter, I've been praying for you that your faith shall not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Right? So Jesus is saying, no, no, I'm not giving up on you. I'm not going to be resentful with what I've had to put up with, with your attitudes and with your behaviors that are often so inspired by the devil to try to buffet me. No, I'm not giving up on you. I will not become resentful. And then look what it says here in verse 40. And when he came to the place, he said, pray. So he went to the place to pray and he said to Peter and those with him, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take the cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And, he, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, he had come to his disciples. He found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. 
Oh, I love this grace of my Savior by which he has never given up on me. And you know, the Lord could have been really done with me so many times. He could have been done with me, but he's not given up on me. He's not let me go. He's not handed me over to my own desires. He has fought for me by his Holy Spirit to perfect and transform me into his likeness. And I am so grateful that the very grace the sweetness by which Jesus loved me, I am now able to love others and not be resentful at any price that goes along with that. And I find that so real, friends, and I've needed to get this revelation or I would have been overcome with resentment and I would have become warped and bent and I would have become a judgmental and and I would have become somebody that is closed off to others so that God could not flow through me as a channel of His grace and His truth. Oh, dear friends, don't let the channel be blocked. Come on, let the Holy Spirit open the channel of His love through you again. Surrender your resentments to the Lord. Surrender that upsetness, that grudge, that pain, that hurt. Surrender it and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I've held this against them. Lord, I, I, I've become dead towards them. I have no love for them. I have no faith for them. I never pray for them. Come on, how do you keep from becoming resentful? Pray, pray for them, like Jesus did for Peter. Pray for them. And you pray, Father, I thank you for your grace for them. I pray for your love for them. I pray, Lord, that you uphold them and strengthen them, that underneath them are the everlasting arms, that you will not give up on them like you haven't given up on me. Father, I pray for your grace. And as you begin to pray, what you pray begins to manifest in you. And that is what keeps you from becoming resentful. It's wonderful to live free from resentment. It really does. It's really, it's wonderful to be an open channel of God's mercy and grace. And that when you feel the enemy punch you with somebody else's weakness, like Jesus was punched with Peter's weaknesses, you can have faith and, and not take an account of it and say, Peter, <laughs> I'm praying for you. I know you're going to become a phenomenal blessing to everybody else. The devil keeps saying you're worthless, but I believe you're going to be a blessing. Isn't that wonderful to have faith for people and love for people? Amen. God bless. Have a good day.